What's up guys, it's Steve for Android at Night, and I'm starting a new video series. I'm going to be doing 10 awesome Android apps, so this is episode 1, enjoy! First up we've got Banjo, this is a social powered news app. So the first time we launch it up you can sign in with your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Google+, all those things, and it will pull all the information together and tailor a list specifically for you. Now it's got a couple of different sections, it's got trending events, and this deals with things like concerts, um, launches of products, so I've been following IFA recently through this, um, and just general bits and pieces. You've then also got news, which is um, slightly more specific, depending on where you are, so you've got Europe, Africa, Middle East, US and Canada, and you can go into an article here, and it will give you basically all the different all the different angles on the same story, pulling in from your social feeds. You can also click across here, and this will give you a picture version, which just lets you look at whatever is happening. So it's a really nice way of following news and keeping up with different opinions. There is also a widget, and you can choose which category you want, so we're going to go for news. It's very similar to the Google ones for YouTube and things like that. I mean, it's okay, I don't particularly like it, I don't use it, but um, if you do want to use it, it's there. Next up we've got Wonderlist. I've been using AnyDo for about half a year now and I really really liked it and then someone recommended Wonderlist and it is really really good. I don't even use the collab options which are really nice. You've got a notification panel up here so if you've got a collab list that everyone can edit then you get notifications and you've also got a message thing which lets you um, talk to people whilst editing lists. But I just use this in sort of single player mode. You make a bunch of different lists but I'm just going to go into groceries here as an example. And you can add an item, so we are going to buy some carrots, because you can never have too many carrots. And then you add them, you can check them, and they'll disappear. You can also hit the star here, which will then jump it to the top of the list. So if you've got anything particularly important, you can star it. You can then choose to unstar it um, if it becomes less important, or just delete it straight from there. It also has a search feature, which is really useful. It also has a widget that lets you just scroll through your different lists. Again, I'm not going to use this, I don't think it looks great. Um, but it is there, and it does work quite well, so if you want a widget, there is one. They also give you a bunch of backgrounds, and I love this because it's a poppy one, which is just too cute. And there's a bunch of different colours, it's quite nice to be able to customise your list just that little bit. Next up we've got every post, and this doesn't look particularly pretty. This lets you post to multiple social networks at once, so for example here, you can post to Facebook if you tap there, I get that unticked. So then I've got my pages ticked, so it posts to my Android Night Facebook page, post to Twitter and to Google+. You then also got Pinterest, Tumblr, LinkedIn, and something else I don't know, Google Pages. It's a really nice way to actually share to different social networks. Sometimes attaching a photo can be a little bit janky, so you just need to be careful before you send it that you've actually attached the photo. Compared to setting an automator up, this is much, much quicker, and it's not pretty, but if you do need to post to different things at once, it's pretty useful. Next up is Tholotis, and this is one I've mentioned before, I know that, but this is sort of the first in a new series, so I thought I would, uh, I would include it. This lets you make images blurred and dimmed, which copies the Musee Live wallpaper. So if you want to pick an image, you can either choose the current wallpaper or you can choose from your gallery. So I've chosen this image of a sort of an assassin type person that I recently found on Google+. And what this lets you do is blur it, so you can drag this bar across to blur to different extents. And then obviously depending on the image it looks different for the blur. For this sort of one I'd probably have the blur relatively, um, relatively slight, so maybe only a couple of notches just to give it that slight effect. And then I'd dim it out a little bit even though it's already dark. You then hit the tick and this will save the new version to the gallery and it doesn't touch the old version which is really nice and it will then also set it as your wallpaper. These blurred out wallpapers just make your icon packs pop that little bit more and make widgets look a little bit better. Next up we've got front back which is kind of a social network mixed with just a tool. The social network aspect is interesting, it lets you search through certain photos so we're going to go for staff pics and the whole premise of this camera is it lets you take a photo with the front camera and the back camera pretty much at the same time. So it's kind of like that thing Samsung did where you can take a photo of your family and if you're, if you're always the person with the camera it means you're actually going to be in the photo um, to a degree. But you've got some pretty cool interesting arty ones here, so like the hand going through and then you've got an example of that with the one person and then the group, stuff like that. It's going to take a photo with the back camera, which is going to be the wall, and then it'll spin around and go to the other camera. So there you go, it lets you choose both at the same time and then you can publish it to your social network. Um, sorry, to their social network, or you can attach it to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Tumblr, and then you can tag people and post where you are. We're just going to post it straight away. But it's really nice, it's a good way to have some fun functionality with your camera, and the, um, the ability to share is nice, and the added social network, whilst I'm not going to use it, it's quite fun to flick through, because there's a couple of fairly creative ideas out there using both cameras. And it's got little bits of functionality, like when you take a photo, if you're not happy with both, you can change just the top one or just the bottom one, um, depending on what you want to do. 
Next up we've got Push Bullet, and this is one of those apps I don't really know what I did before I had it. It's really, really good. It lets you send links and images or just any file from your tablet to your smartphone to your laptop, basically any internet enabled device. So for example, we've got a wallpaper here. I'm gonna hold it down and then you can do send. It'll say a new push. And then you can choose where you want to send it. So you can send it to all your devices or a specific one. And then you can also send it to a contact. And if I send this here in like five seconds, it will pop up on my MacBook um, with an option just to easily download it. The same thing works for links. I'll send a link from my phone browser and within two seconds it will open on Firefox or Chrome on my MacBook. It's just phenomenally good. The other thing it does is when you get a notification on your phone, it will echo it onto your laptop. And this means you can also then reply from your Mac or your PC to say a text message or something, which is really, really cool. And just to make sure that doesn't get really irritating, you can do Android PC notifications and you can do it for specific apps. There's also a universal copy and paste option. It doesn't seem to work that well on Android L, but on other devices I hear it works really well, which is basically the same thing. It means if you copy and paste something or you copy something on your phone, you can then paste it on your Mac, which is pretty cool. So that is Push Bullet, one of the best apps. I'd have to say one of my best apps of the year, in fact, is now probably my most used, having only had it installed for, um, for about a week or so. Next up, we've got Talon, and this is my new favorite Twitter client for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it looks really, really pretty. Um, if you see when you scroll through, it goes completely full screen. For some reason on this Android L um, version, the soft key bar and the notification bar don't go fully transparent. They go to sort of slightly opaque, slightly transparent kind of mix. Um, and that's fine, it still looks pretty cool, but on a lot of um, KitKat ROMs and things, these will go almost completely transparent, which looks absolutely awesome, because it's completely full screen. I think it looks really, really nice. The other cool things you've got is a option there to jump to the top, which is really useful if you don't want to scroll through all your tweets. You've got a little floating thing here, so it's kind of Material UI-esque, which will let you start a tweet, and you can obviously attach your media, attach your location, um, all those normal things. If you tap a tweet, you can swipe across to easily see the conversation um, that's been spawned from that tweet, and you've got options to retweet, reply, favorite, um, things like that. And then also if it's got a web page attached to it, you can scroll across, and it will give you a little preview of the web page, which is pretty awesome. If you open up the sidebar here, you've got access to all your different things like mentions, direct messages. You can discover, check out your lists, cool stuff like that. And if you scroll across onto the other side, you've got your notification panels. This is when people retweet you, favorite your tweets, follow you. Also, if you scroll across, you go from timeline to mentions. And if you go once more, you go to private messages. Next up, we've got something that's almost too simple. It is literally just a torch. But I include it on this list because it looks really nice. And a weird thing, again, as I'm running this Android L ROM, the the soft key bars are opaque. This should be transparent. It basically makes the whole thing white. It looks kick ass. It's really, really sort of neat and suave. It still looks pretty cool. And a swipe will turn your torch on. Really, really useful. It's always useful to have the torch. I also like the fact you can just adjust the screen brightness. Use that as a torch if you don't want to have sort of as powerful a light as the LED on the back. Next up, we've got Umano, and this is really cool. It's kind of a mix between a news app and a podcast manager. It basically gives you a load of news stories that you can choose to read, but it'll also read them for you. And it's not automated text reading, it's actual people reading. And some of the people reading do a great job of it. This is the free version. There's a paid version, which gives you unlimited viewing and lets you add unlimited items to your playlist. And will let you also save things to listen to offline. At the moment, it limits you to, I think, around seven plays a day or maybe 10. And this means you can listen to about 10 different articles, which to be honest is pretty good. Some of the articles are getting on for 20 minutes long, so you should have enough listening time. And it's really, really great if you go to the gym or you walk or you're driving in the car or something. And if you listen to an article, even if it's not on a playlist and it just finishes, it will queue up another article that it thinks you'll find interesting and auto play that for you. It also has the option where you can choose to read them, which is nice as well. And last up, we've got Pixlr Express. I've been using this for a couple of weeks and I have to say it's probably my favorite um, Favorite photo editor ever, it's really, really good. So we're gonna do an example. So the first thing you can do is doodle, which is exactly what it sounds like. It just lets you draw onto the picture. You've then also got add image. Again, exactly what it sounds like, lets you add another image. Then there's also stylize, which is pretty cool. It lets you make it look like pencil drawings, or like silk, which is one of my favorites. All sort of dappled effect, a polygon effect and a sketch effect and all of these effects can be edited to change the intensity. Then we've got a couple of fairly normal things so you can brighten the image, you can heal which lets you blur gently so if you've got a picture of someone's face you can do it, get rid of any blemishes. Then there's focal which emulates the camera effect on the Nexus 5 which will give you that depth of field. Then there's splash which is kind of cool, it makes the whole thing black and white and then you can select an area. So we're going to go 
on the red of my phone. And it'll choose just that color. You can then play around with the tolerance. So if we pull it back to nine. So if we pull it to there, you can see the whole thing is black and white. It'll just make that Nexus 5 pop in the red. It's a really cool effect. You then got some other normal things like contrast, blur, sharpen, you can smooth the image, you can get rid of a red eye. You can also crop it, rotate it, there's an auto fix option. There's also a colour option which will let you change the hue, the saturation and the lightness. And there's a vibrance option that lets you change the brightness of the colours. Then if you go into effects, you've got a bunch of different effects you can choose. If you haven't used it before, there'll be a little arrow and you hit it once and it'll download. It's really, really quick, um, doesn't take any time at all. But these just let you apply different effects, and under each one there's a bunch of different choices. One of my favourites for this is, if you go to the two old section, the names of them are Agatha, Agnes, Gordon, Harrison, and Henry, which I think is kind of cute in a way. You then got an overlay option, and this lets you drop stuff on, so for example if you want a sort of retro poster effect, you can choose that and there's things like flames and fireworks and if you want to you can also add borders which are exactly what they sound like there are a bunch of different borders you can also add typefaces onto it so you can hit you can hit you can type and then say hey because I'm original like that and then you can move it around and mess around with it and the final effect are stickers you got a bunch of different ones so for example you can choose comic and then under comic you've got a bunch of different ones you can add which is pretty cool, there's a hell of a lot of them. Or then you can go into pride and you can scroll through and you've got a big selection as well. There is also a collage option where you can choose two photos and then you can drag the photo to change which bit actually shows and you can drag them around like that to add in different sections or hit a plus to add a different file. You can then mess around with different background colours, you can change the spacing of them the roundness of the corners um, and the proportions of them. So that's a pretty cool effect. If you want to put together something to print, um, this could be a pretty good option. Hope you enjoyed that guys. Please like this video if it was useful. Please also subscribe if you haven't seen me before. I'm going to have more episodes of this out and loads of other stuff. I'm also starting a new thing with EasySkins.com. If you go to the link in the description, you can see my review of the Easy Skins, my Nexus 5. But these guys make really, really nice carbon fiber style skins for a range of different devices and they've been kind enough to give me a load of codes. So for the next four Mondays, I'm going to be giving away a code for one of these skins. All you need to do to be in to win this is to be subscribed and to comment on any of my videos. And I will go through all the most recent comments I've got for that week and pick a winner. You can follow me on all my social media with the links in the description. Please also follow me on Playboard. I'm starting to do all my app lists on there as well, so you guys have somewhere to go to sort of find them all at once. Please comment if there's anything else you'd like to see, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.